Chris Chandler McDougal in motion. He gets a quick pitch out to the left side on the screen it? pass. He's across the goal. Touchdown, Patriots. Steps forward, throws it down the middle to Andre G. Yeah. Complete. Yes, he stumbles six. for a moment, but he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots, as Andre G walks in untouched. Hello and welcome to the Hillcrest Football Review with Coach Sam Adams. Coach Adams, uh, now a four-game winning streak, four and two on the season, uh, three and zero oh in the region, of course, and now the big win over the rivals. Are you are you kind of? I mean, I know you're happy for the win, but are you kind of glad to get the rivalry week out of the way? Yeah, I really am. There's a lot of distractions that can possibly come up during that week, and I thought our our team did a really good job of of handling that, and then uh, handling themselves on Friday night. And they played a good game as well. And we'll take a look at the highlights of that game right after this. Keep it here. Friday Patriot Parkway Band is a very important part in the Hillcrest Friday Night Lights. The theme this year, James Bond's music, was written by our very own Dale Cubis. We talked to some of the band members and our band director to see what they have to say about it. Well, we were trying to find a theme that would, um, that would appeal to both our students and uh, our audience that we play for on Friday night. Uh, just something that everyone could relate to and um, music that everyone could enjoy. Sure. It's a uh, James Bond uh, spy thriller type uh, show. Uh, we have two individuals that are playing key roles. Uh, Jacob Hinton is playing the role of James Bond. And we have Evan Branson who is also play who's playing the role of uh, the evil person uh, in our story. And it's kind of a take off of James Bond, but we kind of put our own little twist um, in the plot and the storyline behind it. So it's not just a halftime show with you know four tunes and, and music and drill. It's actually a story. We're trying to tell a story from the time we start our program to the time that we finish. My name is Lauren Beck. I'm in the 11th grade and I'm on the color guard. I really like it because it's a lot more theatrical and we get to do a lot more movements and expressions. My favorite part is probably the very last movement because we get to have a very stern face and do some cool ninja moves. This group kind of has their own thing. This year, Color Guard has rifles, so they're really excited about that. That's something new that visuals don't always have. Um, our dance team has an amazing kick line this year. They're really great at that, as well as they have an introduction with our James Bond actor at the beginning of the show. Um, and then our majorettes are really um, talented this year. They actually twirl an entire song with a hat, so that's really exciting. And I'm really proud of all of our group. And so I actually got the honor of choreographing that fight scene. So you guys need to look out for that in the show to see who wins James Bond or the bad guy. I'm Lauren Dooley, reporting for PAX TV. County High Wildcats with their team. Okay, coach. A uh, beautiful stadium over there uh, in Northport, Tuscaloosa County High School. Um, I noticed that uh, the coin toss, you uh, lost the coin toss they elected to receive, but that's what you wanted, right? Yeah, that, that would have been what we would have wanted either way. So uh, They did a good job really in this first drive, putting together several successful plays in a row. Uh, we helped them out a little bit with a, with a penalty in there, uh, but you know, they, they did flip field position on us pretty quickly. Had a lot of uh, seemed like excessive motion before the snaps early on. Yeah, that's kind of their personality. Uh, you know, I think that's what they believe is their way to maybe even the playing field just a little bit and uh, you know, try to get you out of position maybe or get you just playing a little too much with your eyes. You know, uh, so the challenge with that is just really just getting lined up in a sound way. And, uh, it took us a couple of snaps to get accustomed to some of the things they were doing, uh, but after it was all said and done, uh, I thought we settled down really well. Yeah, other than this first drive and, of course, the big play that they had early in the second half, your defense was just solid. Yeah, yeah, and that's the way they have been all summer, all summer, all season, and, uh, you know, we're hoping they can continue that. We still have some things we have to improve on moving forward as we uh, get into this big game this week, uh, but we got a lot of momentum going right now, especially on defense. But the good thing is, is that your defense held. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, the first drive on offense was, was a really long one uh, play-wise. I think it was a 15-play drive that covered 80 yards, and uh, that, that's impressive at, at any level, really, being able to put together that many good plays. A lot of high school football is about 
you know, who makes the fewest mistakes. And uh, to be able to put together 15 plays in a row is a, is a good sign. Right, and I have to tell you something. I don't know if Brad told you this, but before your first offensive play, I said, I have a prediction. Our MVP for the game is going to be Chandler McDougal. <laughs> I uh, guess he uh, turned out to be our MVP. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he, he played really pulled really through, well. didn't he? He did. You know, in a situation where he's playing a little different position than what he has played for most of the season, uh, I thought he responded well. Uh, carried the ball tough and uh, got got some tough yardage against these guys. But you're right. Offense looked really good on this opening drive. Yeah, I thought we really did a good job spreading the ball around. Had a lot of guys that contributed on the opening drive and really throughout the night. Uh, you know, had some. But in addition to the running backs that, that uh, hadn't had a lot of carries before this game, we had some other receivers step up and were really productive um, in some uh, bigger roles than what they were accustomed to. Yeah, Tobias Stokes had a really good game as well. Sure. Yeah, I think Tobias ended up with five catches. Um, Andre G ended up with uh, eight or ten. That's and two big weeks in a row for him. Yeah, yeah, Andre's a, a – He's a he's a good player and does a lot for us on offense. I was glad to see Chandler get this touchdown because he had done a, a pretty big workload on the way down there. Yeah, that's a you know, good job just catching the ball, getting the end zone by him, and really good blocking out on the perimeter by Andre G and Trey Ross. So at the 245 mark, seven to nothing. Yeah, that's a, a a lot of a lot of snaps played in uh, in two drives. And right there was his foot not in the end zone. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> sure looked I like it to me. A couple of times it looked like that. Yeah, if he if he's carried back into the end zone to catch the ball, then it should have been blown dead. But, but actually, worked out better for you because he got he came back short of the twenty. Yeah, yeah. Our coverage team did a did a nice job several times of pinning those guys back there really deep. That last play, uh, something that we saw a lot was uh, game tackling. A lot of people in on the tackles. Yeah. And was this punt blocked? Was it? It. Uh, I don't blocked? know if it was partially blocked or not. Really, really strange play. This, yeah, this is this is that strange sequence of events. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they, I, I guess, did they not hear a whistle, or was there a whistle? There, uh, there was no whistle. Um, the official said that we uh, touched the ball. Uh, and that makes it a, a muff punt. But you touched it on the block, right? I, I don't think it was ever – that. they said we touched it further down the field, and so that's why they got the ball back. Okay. And uh, you can't advance those. That's the right. reason why it came back to the, right. to the original spot. Right. But we responded well, and uh, you know, they had a little second chance after the, the turnover, and uh, then – I thought our guys did a good job of not allowing them anything extra. Good picture there of the gang tackling we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, and they're, they're running back five is a, can be a really dangerous player if you give them a little bit of space to work, and uh, we never really did that. They're able to get another first down on a little bubble screen. We'd like to have that to be a lot shorter game. Um, they, they were living dangerously with putting the ball on the ground the first half, and I think it got on the ground five times, and they, they got all of them back. I guess this is a different perspective for you watching from the visitor's side and the lower angle. It, yeah, it is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is definitely a different angle than we've watched all, uh, all weekend. Good first down completion to uh, to Tab Beverly. Tab continues to be a consistent contributor for us, and there he gets a carry, which I guess goes down as a catch in the in the stats. But um, you know, a little jet sweep around the edge, and, you know, again, just trying to thin them out a little bit where they couldn't just keep everybody right in the in the middle of the field. That's the great thing about your offense as this season has gone on is that uh, it seems like you have different people who are contributing every week. Yeah, and that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And here, unfortunately, we had a good drive going and fumbled the ball back to them. And, uh, you know, that was – we don't want to ever put the ball on the ground. That's something we've, we've improved on since the beginning of the year. But, you know, like you said, with new guys uh, having bigger roles in the game, uh, a lot of times they're not as accustomed to carrying the ball. Now this was where it was a really bizarre sequence of events. 
you had the uh, roughing the passer, right? And then two, um, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties against them. Now, it, explain to me. I thought that was a dead ball foul. The, the penalty had been marked off, and that once they got marked off for the two unsportsmanlikes, that it should have been first down and 35 or whatever instead of first and 10. Yeah, the, uh, the reason why is that there, there was never a ready for play whistle blown for the uh, for the next snap. Before so, the penalty flag was thrown. Correct. Even though it was dead ball. Right. Well, right. So okay. that's, uh, they marked off the penalty against us for the uh, rough in the passer. Right. Which gave them a first down. And then the two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties backed them up, but it still remained first and 10. Yeah, we had a big, long discussion about that and couldn't quite figure out why that was. But anyway, turned out yeah. good for you because you ended up getting the safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, safety and um, started off in good field position to start the next drive right across the 50. And then they helped us out a little bit with a extra penalty in there. And then we had a little gadget play that we installed last week to try to get Andre G the ball right, right the middle of the field. And it really worked out exactly the way that we practiced. Yeah. We, he had been in the backfield in some other formations earlier in the game, and so I think that may have helped us kind of set up that play. Okay, I don't know one that said third quarter with that graphic. That was incorrect. But anyway, 16 to nothing here. Yeah, good job by the coverage team. You know, they tried to take it, the return back to the wide side of the field, and our guys did a good job in pursuit, not, not giving up the, the edge. Uh, which is what they were trying to do to us. Uh, we get more more good defense. You consistently see a lot of guys with hats around the ball, quarterback under duress, and uh, we're able to get the ball right back. And this was a pretty special punt. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that one came out of there like a rocket. So I think we clocked it at 61 yards. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely the longest one of the year for them. Uh, we didn't really expect that to be. A big factor in the game with their punter's leg strength, but uh, it was a really good, really good kick by that kid. And then we're kind of in a backed up situation a little bit, and just trying to get a little more space to work after that long kick. And here, their safety makes a really good play uh, on the ball, and Andre G makes a good play to knock it back out, and they come up with it after the struggle for the ball. So how many turnovers for the night? Two. Well, I guess three if you count the uh, punt fiasco. Oh, right. Punt return fiasco. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but two, two on offense either way. And that was really kind of the story of the first half. We felt like we were in definite control of the game. Yeah. And uh, the two turnovers cost us, cost us points and really a chance to – get the game in hand a lot harder than we did. Yeah, the game felt like it was a lot more lopsided than the score really indicated. Yeah. That's, that's the way we felt too, but uh, that's, that's a dangerous way to live if uh, you, know, you let them keep hanging around and possibly develop more confidence as the game goes on and then they, you know, they get a big play early in the second half and really put them right back in the game. So are you liking this uh, receiving the kickoff in the second half? Um, that, it's I didn't like it so much when we uh, immediately went three and out this time. <laughs> That's uh, true. But, uh, yeah, it's just a different different kind of perspective. You know, I think the strongest unit on our team right now is the defense. Right. And, um, you know, just trying to start the game with really good field position and then getting the ball first in the second half uh, can be an advantage if you take if you, Treat it that way. Uh, we didn't do a really good job starting in the second half. We forgot to send a motion on the first play, and that cost us. And we had a hard time digging our way out of the hole. And it caught you creeping up that time, I guess. Yeah, it was a good, good throw and catch on the slant, and uh, he was able to take it a long way. And they tried a little trick play for their two-point conversion, and we did a good job of shutting Obviously, down. we missed it on the camera there because of the yeah. old Statue of Liberty. Yeah. It, they, they did a good job with the fake, but your defense really held their ground and was ready for it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now we kind of had a little bit of pressure on us. Um, momentum of the game probably shifted a little bit after the 
last touchdown. And so it was important for us to be able to put together a drive here. And, you know, if nothing else, just flip the field position back in our favor, uh, which is important with the, the team that we have this year. You know, we're not as explosive on offense as we were last year, but, uh, you know, we can, we can still drive the ball a long way and just take us a few more plays to get down there. Right. This was a really good run after the catch on the screen. Chandler says, you don't wrap up, you're going to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, that was a good, good tough run. Good, tough run. And a nice move there on the, the kind of sweep sort of play. And, uh, you know, unfortunately we get stopped on third and somewhat short. And Joseph Gannon comes in and nails the field goal. It's got to be comforting to know that you got a guy who can hit a 35-plus yard field goal in case you need it in situations. Yeah, yeah, I think that one was right around right around 36. Yeah, and uh, when we feel comfortable with him around that range, uh, you know, we don't want to kick the next one out of bounds on the on the kickoff and give him extra yards. <laughs> but that's the only bad play he had. Tonight. His kickoffs, yeah. other than that, were really good. Yeah, he did a really nice job, except for that one. He was our special teams player of the game again. And the, the coverage on the kickoff was largely, the good coverage on the kickoff was largely due to the kick location. Right. Uh, and over we, in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Deep. yeah and we, we, we try to put it over there. You know, we don't just bash it out in the middle of the field and hope for the best. I mean, we, we try to shoot it into the corner and really point our coverage in that direction. Uh, this got a little interested in there too. Yeah, I was uh, afraid somebody was going to get hurt on that. Yeah, yeah. That's tough sometimes on the guys that are blocking for the punt return. You know, they don't really know where the ball is sometimes. And Monte got kind of lucky there a little bit, I guess, when the ball didn't hit him. Again, start. Uh, Pretty good drive. Um, had some good runs and a, and a screen, a couple screens early on in it, and immediately got the ball back out around midfield. You know, at this point, we kind of felt like if we could just get one more score, then you know the game would most likely be out of reach for them. But as good as our defense was playing, they struggled on offense. So, uh, so we're really just trying to get that last little nail in the coffin. Uh, had an opportunity for it right there. Yeah. Had an opportunity for it there. It was a good route against the coverage that we expected to see. And, you know, just didn't didn't quite connect on it. So at the end of the third, 19 to six. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, this was really good job by the, the our quarterback Colby Smelly. You know, a play where we had a chance to attack downfield if we got a certain look, but uh, he worked his way all the way through the progression and. I took the, the short route, which enabled us to keep the chains going. Now, this one didn't quite work like you planned, I don't think. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. It was a, we'd taken a shot at a little gadget that we'd worked on for a couple of weeks, and it uh, didn't exactly work out the way that we thought it would. But uh, Tab did a really good job just pulling it down and trying to get back toward the line of scrimmage. Right. Uh, Trey Ross with a physical run after the catch. And, uh, you know, we liked, we would like to have get in on, gotten in on that play. We thought we would... Uh, be a little more successful on that screen to Chandler for the second time in the game. But, uh, we, you know, we ended up hammered it in here on, uh, I believe, third down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we felt like at that point that you know, we just had to play ball control and keep the clock running. So the game ends at 26-6. to six. And That one's in the books, 4-2. and two. Team on a four-game roll. You got Bryant coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, this Friday night, another region game, and you got region the rest of the way until your final game of the season. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. That's right. We have an off week after the Bryant game, yeah. and then uh, two more region games, and then the finale against Thompson. All right. Sounds good. We'll be back, and we'll preview that Bryant game right after this. Stick around.
Welcome back to the Hillcrest Football Review. Coach Adams, big win over County High. That one is history. Now we got Bryant on the rise, and Bryant's doing pretty well in the region this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're an improved team. I think the program's taking some strides in the right direction. Uh, they have some really athletic guys on both sides of the ball, and uh, you know we got the best of them last year, but two years ago. It was a really tight game over there, so mm-hmm. our guys have got our work cut out for us. It's always tough going over to the opponent's place and playing, mm-hmm. I know. Uh, well, tell us some specifics about Brian. Well, offensively, uh, Seth Williams is, I guess, kind of a, one of the centerpieces of their offense, the big receiver that's uh, pretty highly recruited. He's mm-hmm. uh, got a lot of physical tools. He's tall. He's fast. Um, and really, I mean, any any physical characteristic that you would look for in a receiver, he's he's got it. So. Um, he has the ability to make some really big plays. So we've got to make sure we um, just kind of keep him under wraps and don't give up any long, easy ones, you know, right, as right. long as we make him earn everything that he, right. that he gets. Uh, and then the running back, that's a, got a lot of good speed. Uh, Gary Quarles mm-hmm. is a good uh, kick returner as well. And, um, I mean, those, those two guys are kind of where it begins for their, their offense. All right, well, it should be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us.